is one of um, five state associations selected by Anchor, our national provider association, to receive free technical assistance as part of the federal NEON project. Janine Pavlak um, with NEBA is our subject matter expert that's been assigned to us. Um, and so Janine, I'll turn it over to you to just give a brief overview of what NEON is and introduce Ryan. Sure, thanks Ellen. Yes, hi, I'm letting people into the waiting room, so don't mind me. Um, this session is being recorded, just so you know. Um, we really would appreciate you though sharing your screen, so even though some of us are a little shy and knowing that it's recorded, there's a tendency obviously to want to turn that off, but it's really so much more of an engaging discussion if we can see each other's faces. Um, as Ellen said, my name is Janine Pavlak, and I've been providing competitive integrated employment service supports for 32 years now. Um, and I've been doing um, work as a subject matter expert for the past probably seven years or so in different states um, around the country, helping providers come up with new innovative service models. So this particular project, Ellen already did a great job of introducing the NEON piece, but really this project is to um, get providers together, um, come up with strategies and ways to increase or begin providing integrated employment opportunities for folks um, and really create a nice learning community so that you can all support and um, kind of learn from one another. So that'll be my role supporting Ellen as um, we look at ways to, to find a structure for you all to get together on an ongoing basis and get that support from one another. And I'll introduce Ryan, which I'm gonna have to find my note. I've known Ryan forever. I've known Ryan for about 15 years now. Uh, Ryan's a program director at New England Business Associates and all of the work that we do is um, focused on integrated employment for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We serve a little over 400 people between the two states. We're also a national um, employment network through Social Security's Ticket to Work program. So we serve roughly another 300 people nationally through that. Um, Ryan has been, as I said, he's been providing individualized support services for, for folks for at least 15 years that I know of, probably even a little bit longer on his end. But he's also, even more importantly, a proud dad of two boys, one of whom lives with a disability. So he has both uh, professional and personal experience. Ryan, I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. Um, can everybody hear me? Do I see nods, confirmation? Cool, awesome. All right, so uh, there is, uh, the, as Janine alluded before some folks got on here, there are some large storms that are rolling through the area, so I'm hoping that will not affect uh, today, but if you see both me and Janine freeze at the same time, uh, just hang out, we'll do our best to hop back on uh, and, and salvage things. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. And for those of you who, um, who were here a couple of weeks ago uh, when we did the Living Your Mission, um, we're going to start with a quote that I had on there that's a little bit of overlap. So I don't want you to think, oh no, here comes the exact same stuff that we talked about two weeks ago. Uh, today is fresh content. Uh, but I, I'm leading off with this quote, when we choose, we own, and when we own, we grow and we learn. So today we're going to be talking about job developing with a with a mission in mind, and rather than as we um, a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about living your mission, we talked about ourselves, right, and and our own mission and why we're here, uh, you know, working in the supported employment field. Today we're going to pivot and we're going to talk about the job seekers that we support, and. Uh, this, you know, this quote, when we choose, we own, when we own, we grow and we learn. It applies to job seekers just as much as it applies to ourselves. And so as with all the things that we talk about today, we're going to talk about a, a couple of discovery tools uh, to help people find uh, paths, you know, to employment. Uh, we're going to talk about company missions and we're going to talk about missions of actual positions and put that to practice a little bit. So I lead off with this quote as kind of the underlying foundation that choice is a very powerful thing and when people choose work, uh, it works out for everybody. So I start off with finding a little bit about finding purpose and this is one of my favorite graphics uh, that I share with colleagues and job seekers and 
uh, really anyone that is willing to listen. Uh, so you may have seen this before uh, floating around online. And what this is is a, is a fairly complicated Venn diagram that breaks down into four main components that you can see in the blue, red, gray, and green circles on the outside. Uh, so if we can find something that we do well, if someone can find something that is something that they love doing, it's something that the world needs, it's a product or a service, and it's something that they can get paid for. When all four of those things come together, it turns into a true purpose in life. And, and a couple of weeks ago, we talked about a mission moment, like a, a, a time that we found our calling, that the job that we're doing is what we want to do and what we love to do. I hope that everybody on this call today thinks that their purpose is to be here. Uh, if not, that certainly that they're making a difference. But I always, I look at this often and it's not just about, uh, you know, my job, but also my hobbies and my family's hobbies, my kids' activities and what they like to do. And I, I, I use this diagram often so that I can, you know, help people and help myself understand where am I with this particular thing in my life and what, you know, what, what's driving me to do it, what's preventing me from not doing it. Uh, and so this, this diagram, you know, when I send out materials, this will be included. So I hope that you can all find the, some kind of use for this, whether it's for yourself or whether it's for someone else. So we're going to take a deep dive into uh, what's known as RIASEC, better known as the Holland Code of uh, Psychometrics. Quick uh, show of hands or any, if you want to type in the chat, has anyone ever heard of this or used it before? I can only see a few screens. I see Christy and Jody shaking their heads. No. Janine, anyone nodding? Any yeses? Nothing in the chat, and I only can see a few people, too. I'm trying to change that, but I'm thinking that no one, this is new for all of us, Ryan. Awesome. So this is a tool that I ran across, uh, I want to say, three or four years ago. I was at a conference in New Jersey, and somebody uh, had mentioned this discovery tool um, as, you know, something to help people find different spaces of the vocational you know, the vocational part of our lives where they can identify with. So I have a couple of links here. The first link is openpsychometrics.org. Uh, again, this will be included in the slides when they get sent out. And ONET, which is a very well-known resource for, uh, for employment discovery, they integrate the, the Holland Code into many of their jobs. They classify it as an interest. Um, and basically, uh, what RIASEC stands for is realistic, investigative, artistic, social, enterprising, and conventional. So I have this graph here. I'm not expecting you to remember the colors or what it means. There's not gonna be a quiz on what's what, but this breaks down each, each section, uh, you know, into a more color-coded way. And we're gonna dive into each one of these a little bit. So there are six different components to RIASEC. Realistic, investigative, artistic, social, enterprising, and conventional. So when we talk about realistic, what does that mean? So when we talk about realistic, we're talking about somebody who likes to work with animals, tools, machines, so hands-on work, generally avoiding social activities. So interacting with people may not be uh, this person's strength. Good skills working with tools, mechanical or electrical drawings, machines, plants, and animals. They value practical things that you can see and touch and use. And again, repeating plants, animals, tools, equipment, machines, a lot of technical knowledge. Uh, and again, that kinesthetic learning goes into the realistic realm. And they see themselves as practical people uh, who are mechanically inclined and they have a very realistic view on life. Chances are, although possible, you don't see people identifying strongly in both the realistic and the artistic realm. And we'll go a little bit deeper into that. Investigative work. Uh, so these folks uh, like to study and solve math or science problems. And they generally avoid things like leading, needing to persuade people or trying to sell things because that's, that's a very concrete thing, whereas investigative is more open-ended. These folks are good at understanding and solving science and math problems. They value that scientific look and that, that intellectual, uh, you know, the intellectual deep dive into what makes something tick. What, what are the inner workings of something to make it work? And they see themselves as precise, 
again, scientific and intellectual. Artistic. So these are people that like to do creative activities, art, drama, crafts, dance, music, creative writing. Generally, these are folks that avoid highly ordered or repetitive activities. I see myself as a little bit of an artistic for sure, because as Janine knows, if you give me anything that's repetitive again and again, after about an hour, I am done and I'm just ready to move on to the next thing. These folks have good artistic abilities, whether it's writing, drama, music, art, uh, making things from scratch. Uh, these people really enjoy creating, creating and, and, and conceptualizing things for work. They value the creative arts and the work of creative arts. And they see themselves as expressive, uh, emotional, original, and um, really importantly, independent. So these are people who, you know, when it comes to oversight, they may be perceived as the people who are difficult to supervise, maybe need direction multiple times before they get a concept, um, and, and different, you know, various characteristics like that. S is for social. So this is the helping profession. I'm willing to bet if you went to that website and did the psychometrics, uh, the, the, the test, you, most of us would probably identify as being a well, highly scored in the, in the social realm. Teaching, nursing, giving first aid, uh, we generally avoid the realistic realm, which is the machines and tools, working with animals or plants, uh, this fits me to a T. Uh, really good with teaching, counseling, nursing, providing information. We really value helping people and helping to solve social problems. So when, when we talk about living your mission, we talk about the social justice piece of the work that we do and, and being part of solving a social problem. And people who identify as social see themselves as helpful, friendly, and trustworthy. E is for enterprising. So these are the folks that like to lead. These are the salesmen, the sales folks. They can sell ice to an Eskimo, as I like to say. Uh, generally, they like to avoid things. Uh, so this is the opposite of the uh, investigative people. So they require careful, they avoid things that require that really careful observation. Uh, analytical thinking is not their forte, although they, again, people can be in multiple realms. And as we'll find out, people identify with multiple realms good at leading people, selling ideas. These are people who value success when it comes to leading. These are the people who want to lead, uh, people who tend to be politically inclined, business savvy, and they see themselves as energetic people who, have, who are ambitious and goal-driven, but also have that sociable component because that's important for the leadership and for the, you know, for the persuasion uh, aspects that social skills still come in play. And C is for the conventional realm. So these are people who like to work with numbers uh, in a very set and orderly way. So you're full, you, you know, for those of you who like to be uh, follow a routine day after day, that repetitive work, conventional would probably be a very strong suit for you. Good at working with written records and numbers, systematic valuing success in that business sense. So we think about the administrative assistance, we think about uh, data processors, those kinds of jobs fall into the conventional realm. And they see themselves as orderly people and are really good at following a set plan. People who, are, who have very good organizational skills will tend to score well in the conventional realm. So when you put this all together, if you go to that psychometric site, there's actually an assessment that you can take and it's 48 different questions and it's rated on a scale of uh, disagree all the way through to strongly agree or I thoroughly enjoy doing something and down to I don't like doing something. And you receive a score in each of these six components anywhere from zero to 32. So I took the assessment again, I've taken it several times and it does change over time and I'm sharing my results here. So my highest realm was social uh, followed by investigative and artistic. And as I said, I'm not a very realistic th thinking person. That hands-on work is not my thing. Just ask my wife. If anything breaks, it's call somebody to come fix it. Um, the key thing with, the, with RIASEC is that even though there are six components, 
we, inv we, we identify with at least two, if not three of them. So when we take the results of this, these can get plugged into ONET, where, where uh, that database of jobs and that database of, of different career opportunities sits. So what I did, this is gonna be a little more difficult to see, but I, I connected my results to ONET and this is what I got, 36 different jobs that ONET combined with my RIASEC, my Holland code, decided works well for me. And you can see on the left-hand side, SIA, SAI, those are what uh, the primary, secondary, and tertiary uh, identifiers for RIASEC for these jobs. So as you can see, rehabilitation counselors, uh, music therapist, counselor, counselor, teacher, it all fits in that realm. So my code in order was SIA because my social was highest, my investigative was second highest, and my artistic was third highest. But these are different combinations of those three. So if I were somebody who was looking for a job or trying to find a career path, this is a great first step. And for each one of these jobs, I didn't go this far in my, in my slides, but if you were to click on each one of these jobs, it gives you a really in-depth look at uh, the different skills that go into being successful at those jobs, the pay range, the typical education that's required. Um, so I really encourage all of you uh, after, after today's uh, session, you know, go to that website. It took me about, takes about 15 minutes to go through those 48 questions and to get your results. And it ties, it ties right into it. This is applicable to anybody. I can do it, you can do it. Job seekers can do it with or without assistance. Um, we found it to be a really powerful tool to help establish that discovery piece as we, as we move forward into job development. So these are my two boys, uh, Baylor and Mason. Baylor is currently five and Mason is coming up on 10. Uh, Mason identifies, uh, has a diagnosis, uh, diagnoses of autism uh, ADHD and pervasive mood dysregulation disorder, which does go uh, along with autism diagnoses in many uh, facets. And the reason that I share this picture with two different kids is because I have one child who lives with disabilities and I have a neurotypical child. Now, the assessment itself is more work-related questions, so I didn't actually put them through this assessment, but I did ask them a few questions. And this is dad's call. But I, uh, I see Baylor as a realistic, investigative, and enterprising person at his very young little age based on how he acts and how he goes about completing activities. And I see Mason as artistic, conventional, and realistic. He likes routine. He likes having those set tasks. But at the same time, I've seen some of his drawings and he's very, uh, he's very in tune with uh, the apps like Procreate, garage band loves creating things like that. So the reason that I share this is because really no person is going to land in the same position. And even if you have the same three letters, they may fall in different orders. So as Baylor gets older and as Mason gets older, I'll, we're going to continue to do this. And when they get to be working age, I'm going to throw that assessment at them and become the vocational counselor in home and say, okay, here's, here's some jobs that uh, we might want to explore. So the RIASEC assessment talks an awful lot about skills and interests. So it's where are my skills, what interests do I have, and what, what would I enjoy doing, what would I not enjoy doing? When we tie skills and interests into what our passions are, that's kind of where we get missions. And as we talked about a couple, you know, a couple weeks ago, we talked about our individual missions. Today we're gonna to move forward and we're gonna talk about more, uh, more missions for positions and missions, what goes into creating a mission for a position and maybe how companies identify with those missions as well. So with our start on mission statements, I'm gonna ask everybody to utilize the chat box for our next uh, little tidbit here because we are going to play a little trivia game called Name That Company. And we're gonna to try to name the company based on their mission statements. So the goal here is to see how well either we can identify a mission statement to the company, and these are all well-known national companies that I'll be sharing, 
or how well does a company do in, in, in linking that mission? So how recognizable is a company by their mission? So I've got six different missions here. And after each one, we'll take about, you know, 30, 45 seconds and give everybody an opportunity to type some guesses and we'll see who can, uh, who can interpret some missions. So I'll read the first one. Our vision is to create a better everyday life for many people. Our business idea supports this vision by offering a wide range of well-designed, functional home furnishing products at prices so low that as many people as possible will be able to afford them. So I'm going to give everybody, let's say, you know, 45 seconds. If you want to type your guesses in the chat, Janine, I cannot see the chat. So if you want to uh, read some, read them aloud as they come in, and then uh, when it's when everyone's had a guess, we'll share the uh, the company. You're muted, Janine. We have one person said Ashley Furniture or American Furniture, and several said IKEA. Okay. Any other guesses, or is it everyone? Everyone's already typed in. No other guesses. Anything right. other than IKEA? or American furniture. All right, so this one appears to be a very easy one. Those of you who said Ikea are correct. So well, for, well home, the furnishing, the home furnishings, well-designed home furnishings. Notice it didn't say anything in their mission statement that they are easy to put together. <laughs> uh, for those of you who have struggled with Ikea furniture, it just says affordable. All right, let's go on to the second one. Our mission is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. All right, well, it's pretty much tied between Microsoft and Apple. <laughs> it's pretty much completely tied. No other responses. Anybody think it's anybody other than Apple or Microsoft? No? All right. So uh, something that I, I don't know if I shared it a couple weeks ago, but uh, I, as a night and weekend job, I actually work as a technical expert at an Apple store. Um, however, this is not Apple's mission. So half of you are incorrect. It actually is Microsoft. Uh, Apple being the uh, eccentric company that it is, I tried to find their mission statement. They really don't have one. Uh, and, and if they do, it's a dead giveaway because it's we make the Mac and the iPhone. And it's like, okay, well, I can't share that one. They'll know what it is right away. Um, but I, I, I thought it was interesting how Microsoft's mission, number one, is much simpler than Ikea's. And it really doesn't mention anything about the technology. I think the piece that people read and got it was people and organizations. So that speaks to something universal. So you guys are doing really well so far. All right, let's move on to the next one. Strives for honesty and fairness in its interactions with consumers and investors and looks to deliver value and quality. At its core, the company operates on the premise of securing and retaining customer loyalty, producing financial benefits for investors, and exploring all opportunities for growth within the company. I will say I will be very impressed with anybody who gets this one. I see Jean already shaking her head. She has no idea. <clears throat> We're getting very different answers to this one. Okay. That's good. <laughs> All right. So we've got everybody. Did everybody type in their, their thought there? All right. So we have Ameriprise, Merrill Lynch. Oops. Going the wrong way. Um... Edward Jones, Hartford, Dell, and that looks like it. So, so a lot of financial, right? Ameriprise, Edward Jones, all these investment firms. And then somebody said Dell, which is really interesting. It's Pepsi. 
<laughs> I see all the faces. That is Pepsi's mission statement. So I don't know if I can go back a slide. Yeah. What does it say about beverages at, in any way, shape, or form here? Right? So with, I, I always, I love to include this one because first of all, it's a, it's a longer one and it's all about, it says customer loyalty, but it's financial benefits for investors. Investors is mentioned a few times in there. So it really speaks to financial, but they're just selling sugar water, which is, which is really interesting. Well, yeah, all the right. interactions with customers yeah. Card too. I don't think as Pepsi is interacting really with me. I think of it sitting on my table. Yeah, nobody, nobody, wa well, maybe people walk into Pepsi HQ and ask for a Dr. Pepper. I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, it, it doesn't, it, it did, it threw me off. So uh, everybody gets stumped by this and I expected that. All right, let's move on to another one. We design products that make it easier for families of all kinds to spend time outside together. Join us and be an outsider. All right, so we've got three, a few. Several people said REI. We've got North Face and Coleman. Those are the... Is REI based in Colorado? I, I, I was curious. Here, but the flagship store is here. In Seattle. The headquarters are in Seattle, okay. Yeah, corporate headquarters are in Seattle. So, okay, so we had, we had what? We had REI, Coleman, and North Face? Yep. All right, so this is an example where you had the right uh, the right um, type, the right category, but not the right company. It is LL Bean. Mm -hmm. So half credit because you were definitely naming the right kinds of like those outdoor campy, campy kind of companies. Um, just be an outsider is is their kind of slogan. So I think that's that was the little tiny hint in there. All right, here's another one. To deliver superior quality products and services for our customers and communities through leadership, innovation, and partnerships. So this one's really generic. So I'm expecting kind of answers all over the place with this one too. All different answers. Okay. Anyone else going to guess? All right, we've got Amazon, Starbucks, Target, Johnson & Johnson. Amazon, Starbucks, Target, Johnson & Johnson. I could see Amazon like a little bit because Amazon has absolutely everything, right? Um, so whoever said Starbucks was probably the closest. It's Wendy's. Hmm. So this was an homage to, for those of you from a couple weeks ago, my very first job was at Wendy's. So I, you know, when I was putting this together, I said, I wonder what Wendy's mission statement is. There's nothing about burgers or square patties or never frozen beef. That's, that's all like in the, in the slogan piece. As a conglomerate, they felt to go more generic. All right. I think this is the last one that's coming up now. To help make financial lives better, by connecting clients and communities to the resources they need to be successful. So far only, oh, a couple guesses, here we go. So we have Chase, Wells Fargo, a few people guessed, U.S. Bank, Bank of America. Okay. All right. So whoever said Bank of America, it has been. So again, everybody had <laughs> Ellen, Ellen with the whoop whoop. There we go. Um, so yeah, everybody had banks because again, that, that word financial was, uh, was in there. So I, I find it, I find it interesting. The reason that I include all those different kinds of missions is because 
you know, there were a couple that all of you or all or most of you got immediately, or at the very least you were in the right realm. And then there were a couple that just really made no sense, right? When we connected to the product that we know in our heads, it really didn't make much sense. And then I also share, you know, some of them are really short. They're like 10, 15 words. And then there's a couple that just go on and on and on. So it's, it's interesting when, when corporations think about mission statements, I don't know who they hire or who comes up with them, but there's just such a mishmash of all over the place. But there are some things in common. If you look at just about any large corporation's mission statement, you're going to see some common words. Words like advance, enhance, inspire, motivate, promote, build together, quality. Quality is probably in just about all of them, I would think, except the financial ones. Value, product, customer. If they're selling anything, chances are you're going to see the word customer. Core, brand, friendly, best, innovate, and better. So these are all, they're either positive words that talk about positive progress or their direct references to what they do, whether it, like the product or inspire or, or working with a customer. Um, uh, to throw it back to Apple, uh, Apple start, I will say this, Apple starts their credo, their retail credo for employees with directly with a pun. And their, their credo starts with, at our core, our soul is our people. So I, I find it hilarious that Apple says at our core. It's uh, definitely a play. So we see all these words and we see this, you know, incorporated into the corporate missions. When we think about the work that we do, some of these words are in here, right? We talk about, uh, you know, APSI's mission is to advance employment equity for people with disabilities. Um, enhancing quality of life. We talk, at NEBA, we talk about enhancing quality of life. There's enhance and quality. Uh, you know, we talk about inspiring people. We talk about motivating people to work. Uh, we talk about innovating when we talk, when we, when we think about customizing jobs, that's innovation. So even though we're in a very different realm of work, we're working with people, we don't sell anything. We're not, you know, most of us, if not all of us are working with nonprofits, you know, we're not here to make a million bucks, but these words are for the most part you know, they, 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 they're synchronized. They work no matter what you're, what you're talking about. So a few years ago, when I started thinking about this, I said, well, wait a minute. We have companies that have missions, but then when you get in depth with that company, you don't really see missions of positions. We see job descriptions. We see you know, when you sit down in orientation, you know, I don't, if for, those, if for those of you who may have worked in retail, you know, I remember sitting down at Wendy's and they pop the VHS in and you watch this inspirational video that suddenly makes you want to just go make a hamburger, you know, and they share the company mission and what your role is, but it never, apply, it never applies directly to the actual job that you're doing. It's like you are inspiring people by charging them three eighty seven dollars for a single with cheese. Uh, you know, it, it's there's a disconnect there. So I thought, well, what could we do if we were to take a job description and kind of give that, that more inspirational, that more mission-based language? And, and hence, we started talking about missions of positions. So this is a slide that was in, the, um, in, the, in our session a couple weeks ago as a reminder for what goes into a mission. And when we think back to those corporate missions, uh, we, you know, you can probably, for, for most of them, answer these questions. So does it have value? We talked about value, uh, you know, not only in the mission statements, but every one of those reassec uh, sections has said that this is what we value. So values are important not only to the skills we learn, but for the work that we do. Does it have inspiration? You know, does it inspire somebody to, in the case of a corporation, does it inspire you to grab a Pepsi or to buy from Ikea? If it's, if it's a job, does it inspire you to go to work every day? Does it inspire you to get up in the morning and say, this is what I've got to do? Is it plausible? And I think that that's one of the biggest disconnects between you know, the corporate mission and the people doing the work. And if, if I, if I, you know, I think the textbook example that I think about 
is, you know, if we think about, um, if we think about, you know, if we think about Pepsi talking about talking with investors and investors and customer loyalty and making money, you know, how does that speak to the people working in the warehouse, putting the crates on the trucks? It really doesn't. I mean, you could kind of see an employee as an investor. There's a lot of corporations that do that, but you, you know, let me know if you feel other, if you feel otherwise, I personally feel that that's where the disconnect is. It's hard to connect a job description to a mission and how they kind of mesh together. And then specificity. Another thing that I think the corporate missions don't speak to very much, that job descriptions certainly are a bulleted list of this is what this job entails. So when we think about tying a mission to a position, the specificity is, is really built in uh, to the job description itself. So when we think about that, what we, what we did was we kind of looked at a few positions and we said, what if we were to kind of create a mission for a position? What would that look like? So when I think about a service clerk, like a grocery store service clerk, and by the way, according to ONET, a service clerk identifies as conventional, realistic, and enterprising for that reassect. So if you get somebody who identifies with that, um, that you might want to look towards that kind of work for discovery. So you can either type in the chat, you can speak up and un unmute yourselves if you like. When you think about a service clerk, what are the things that you think about as far as what they do? What does a service clerk do? Is there anything in the chat, Janine? No, I'm watching. <laughs> or if you want to unmute. Yes. Certainly they assist people. Right, so they, so they assist people with groceries, with stocking, whatever it might be, yeah. Oh, I've got interacts with public. A few right. people said customer service, greets the public, provides excellent customer service. Okay, so that's all like interpersonal, uh, interpersonal connections there. Any, any others, so, oh yeah. Maybe bag groceries, collect carts, uh, handle money, working at a register. Yep, some, some require that you cashier, bagging groceries, carts. So it's, it's, when we think about that kind of job description that we just made, right? Greeting the public, bagging groceries, collecting carts, maybe handling money. There's kind of a, when you look at the, maybe not so much the greeting customers, but when you look at the tasks, we start to think about, well, how is it expected to be done? And when I think about a service clerk, I think of accurately, you know, nobody wants, nobody wants the, the 15 pound ham put on their loaf of bread. You know, there's a way to do it. It's not about just shoving groceries in bags. There's a, there's an accuracy to it. There's an art to it. So we thought about this and, and we put together a mission for a service clerk. And here's what it looks like. Service clerks make the customer experience seamless and easy by accurately stocking items and knowing where items are located. Service clerks save people time, money, and show appreciation for customers entering the store. We've tweaked this to say, if, to, for different versions, to say accurately bagging items. Uh, you can change the wording as you want, but rather than just say, here's the bulleted list of what you do, we tried to create something that, well, inspired that had value to it and inspired a service clerk to say, I make people's lives easier. I make the customer experience easier by saving people time, by telling them where, you know, where the garlic salt is to, to you know, to queue up a half hour venture I had one day to find garlic salt. Um, you know, the, the, without those people there, people's lives are more difficult. What are, what are your thoughts on reading this for the first time? I'm curious as to what you think as far as, as it applies to more of a mission that inspires somebody. I see Jody she, nodding. <laughs> do, do you feel like, do you feel like, you know, somebody who works as a service, who works as a service clerk gets up in the morning and thinks about this to make it more motivating to go to work? If that's somebody's true passion, you know, this is what we felt would identify. Uh, Christina said it sounds professional. It sounds professional, right? It's a, what do you do for work? I'm a service clerk. I think depending on what you do for work and what line of work you come from, 
you know, I think we in the supportive employment field here at Servicebrook, we're like, oh, that's great. Somebody who, you know, and I'm certainly not trying to be stereotypical, but somebody who works at, like as an attorney or somebody who might be more out of touch with entry level jobs, what's their perception of a service clerk? There's an awful lot of negative stereotypes that go around that for some people. And this kind of, it kind of helps to alleviate that, especially if the service clerk themselves feels that way to kind of put a more of a value on. This is the positive impact that I bring to the world and to, and to my job. In the chat, Ryan, um, it, that did come up. Someone said it expresses the value of the position and it's uplifting and inspirational. Cool. So, exactly. So that's exactly the point that we're trying to make here. So let's look at another position. So we took a food prep assistant, which identifies as realistic and conventional. That's that mechanical working with your hands, uh, you know, certainly using knives and, and that conventional work, the, the, the work that's always there. It's always been there. It's always going to be there. So let's, let's, you know, let's discuss this one a little bit. So when you think about a food prep assistant, what does a food prep assistant do if we were to kind of bullet out a job description as a group? Gathers the materials needed. Gather materials needed, yeah. Washing, chopping, heating food. Okay. Chopping lots of vegetables. Chopping vegetables. Whenever I, whenever I hear food prep assistant, the first thing I think of is the people that can cut like the, you know, they're just chopping the mushroom paper thin like 50 times a second that I can't do. Uh, that position that saves people time, therefore money. It's accurate and detailed portion control about presentation. Um, now, now people, the gears are starting to turn, talking about presentation, um, the accuracy. You know, when, when, if you have to julienne those carrots, you, you got to julienne them at the very same thickness so that when you throw them in the frying pan that they cook evenly. I don't know how to do it. I just know that's what you're supposed to do. So. <laughs> certainly keeps the workspace clean. All right. So we kind of, you, you jumped right into not just what they do, but how they're supposed to do it. So that's, that's great. So when we looked at that mission, here's what we had. The food prep assistant makes sure that food looks and tastes good. By consistently adhering to chef specifications, prep assistant's work is proudly put on display on each and every plate in the form of delicious appetizing food that guests love. I see now I see some big head nods like so this speaks much more to just I chop carrots and mushrooms and give them to the chef like this is the work that I did is put in front of every person that's going to eat it everybody sees my work and and it's proudly put there because we expect that 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 meal is going to taste delicious so what are, what are thoughts what are thoughts on that does anyone have any other insight or anything that they would add to that to that mission Anything, Janine? No, but yeah. That's then, and that's okay. But this is these are you know these are meant to keep you to keep us thinking. And by all means, you can take the food prep assistant mission as written here, and you can just blast that out if you'd like. Um, but you know, you might find a little nuance at a particular company, or or somebody might throw something in from an informational interview that you do that might make you tweak it just a little bit. So these missions, you know, they're not meant to. They're not so much meant to print in a, in a dictionary to be like, you know, the, the supported employment dictionary of positional missions. Uh, but it's, you know, it's meant as a guideline to get you thinking in that way. So I've got one more that we'll talk about. Custodian. So this is another one that's realistic and conventional. And the reason, so I included three jobs that all identify as R and C. And the reason that I did that is because whether we like it or not, I personally am not a fan of it, and we're trying to break that barrier. R and C are where people with disabilities are going to tend to be placed in jobs. It's kind of a stigma, uh, if you ask me. Although for some people looking for that discovery in their first job, these are also jobs that most people's first jobs are going to fall into the realistic and conventional realm as well. 
And that's why I, I included these because like it or not, they're the more likely jobs that people are going to get as first jobs or jobs to build skills. So when we talk, when we think about a custodian, let's, let's talk about, let's, let's bullet out that job description. What do people have to offer? Um, in the chat, it says ensures that spaces where people work learn. Oh, I just sorry. Um, ensures that spaces where people work, learn, and play are clean and welcoming. Um, ensures workplaces, building, and or public spaces are comfortable and clean. Provides professional sanita sanitization, meeting industrial standards, and presenting the business in a positive manner, making a good first impression. Okay, now we're writing missions here. Wow. Yeah. Sanitize, <laughs> clean, and maintain a safe environment, which now in the reality of where we're Right. Where we're living, certainly these descriptions are really important to, to put in there. Right. Um, someone added responsible, autonomous. Autonomous, yeah, for, for, for sure. All right, so a lot of really good insight there. And I think we're going to see almost, uh, almost a mirror image of what people collectively put through. So what I have here for the mission of a custodian Custodians ensure the safety, security, and cleanliness of buildings for all who enter them by knowing chemical safety and OSHA guidelines and by building friendly relationships with building patrons. Custodians establish a routine and balance of keeping spaces clean and allowing patron access. So one of the, we, we actually have a couple people in our program who work on in that kind of cleaning realm and one person in particular one of the biggest challenges that they had when they started their job was they would block off their section for cleaning. And if, if a patron needed to get through, they'd be like, sorry, cleaning. And it was just a very kind of gruff way to be like, yeah, don't even bother coming through here. This is my space. So that's kind of what where the routine and balance of keeping spaces clean and allowing access is. And it took us a long time to talk about, you know, if you're just doing your cleaning routine, you've got to let people come through. If somebody has spilled a gallon of vegetable oil on the floor, that's when you stop people because you don't want them to, to slip and fall. So we had to kind of process when it's okay to say you really can't come through here and when to allow that access. So that's an example of something where, you know, our team, my team's experience with one person kind of contributed to that mission. And somebody else's mission might not include that for a custodian. This can be catered to whatever is going to you know, put value and, and a positive impact on what that person, you know, what somebody working as a custodian wants to feel, to feel like they're making a positive impact on the world. Are there any questions so far, thoughts, insight? Not seeing anything yet. All right. So as I did last time, I'm going to put you all to work a little bit here and I'm going to ask you to take a crack at making a mission or two or three, whatever you would like to do. So I've got a list of six jobs here and, and I've included the RIASEC codes if you want to, uh, if you want to look that up. And I'm actually going to put the, um, I'll return back to the RIASEC uh, coding when, you, uh, when you're working on this. So I have finance clerk, which falls under conventional and enterprising, certified nurse assistant, which is social, conventional, and realistic, office assistant, which is conventional, enterprising, and realistic, dental hygienist, which is social, realistic, and conventional, an IT coordinator or administrator, which is investigative, realistic, and conventional, and a restaurant host hostess, which is enterprising, and social. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take a good, you know, 10, 12 minutes here and I want everyone pick one. If you get done with it early, pick a couple if you'd like and let's see if you can uh, see how you do at making a mission out of the, out of the position. And I'll put, I'll bring up the Reasec, uh guide here for you. Let's come, let's come back at 2.05. Uh, sorry, 12.05 your time. I'm on Eastern time. 12.05, and uh, I, I'd, like to, I'd like you to share them out. If you get done in the midst, uh, you can type it in the chat. If you want to read it aloud, we can do that as well. So I'm going to uh, X out of my presentation here. We'll come back at 2.05, and I'll pull up the Reasec. Okay. 
patrons. They use organizational skills to manage efficient seating of patrons and equitable distribution among servers to ensure smooth restaurant operations. They help patrons understand wait times and help facilitate a pleasant dining experience. That's great. Another, um, uh, that reminded me, Ellen, thank you. Another factor that I, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's an underlying kind of benefit, but if, you know, as job developers, we're expected to kind of learn about the jobs, but we don't know everything about every job. And if I didn't know a thing about being a restaurant host or hostess, Ellen, what you just said would be like, that gives me a pretty good understanding of what, you know, of what, of what one does. So it's, it's a learning experience kind of all around. There are some in the chat. Sorry for that little delay. I was frozen for a little bit as the storm <laughs> flew by me. Um, but in the chat, I don't know if people would prefer to read them out loud, um, but there's uh, CNA. Someone did the CNA. It provides warm and welcoming personal support, helping others to maximize their independence in bathing, dressing, personal hygiene, and doing so with the utmost dignity and respect, making the person feel important. Very nice. Very good. Um, host hostess shows appreciation to customers entering restaurant and attends to their seating preferences, creates a well-beginning environment, maintains efficiency and fairness across all wait staff, sections, and restaurant, guides guests to their seats and ensures that they have menus and any initial questions answered, provides positive first experience of establishment to both those visiting and calling to inquire about the restaurant. Great. I have another restaurant host, hostess one. And it says, uh, restaurant host hostess are the front line of a positive customer experience. By attentively welcoming each person and addressing their desires, the host or hostess ensures that patrons feel seen and valued. They are responsible for thoughtfully assigning tables, considering customer and business needs. The host or hostess ensures that customers and wait staff are set up for success by confirming that spaces are clean, well, well, welcoming, sorry, and supplies are available whenever needed. And I have an IT coordinator, responds quickly to computer technology problems requests, providing accurate, detailed, and user-friendly solutions so people can do their jobs effectively and efficiently. Nice. Yeah. So uh, uh, along the lines of the restaurant host hostess, when I was looking up the, the RIASEC codes for these jobs and I saw the enterprising one for restaurant host hostess, I, I had to do a little bit of a double take. I was like, wait, where is, how is that the primary? I could see it kind of fitting in, but then, you know, hearing what you guys just said and, and looking into it a bit myself, you know, they really are coordinating everything there. They've got to, you know, they have to make sure that the guests are equally sad because you don't sit everybody and overwhelm one person versus another and, and making sure the tables are clean. It really is a lot of autonomy and decision making and kind of guiding people to where they need to go. So it's it. I think that, you know, the, your missions that you just read it read really, um, really help bring that out. There's two more for the host hostess. Would you like to hear those? Yeah, I want to hear any. These are so great. Um, creates a climate of welcoming entertainment by attending to guest needs with the highest level of customer care and enriching the dining experience while maintaining order of tables throughout the restaurant and providing exemplary support to the remainder of the service team. I like the enriching the, the dining experience. And lastly, our host hostess is responsible for being the first face of our service team. They're imperative in making our guests feel welcome and accommodated as they're being seated and situated to a table of their liking. They're all great. Wow. I wish I could have a table of my liking. Half the time I get put where, I, where they want me. <laughs> So, so yeah, that was, uh, how did that feel? Like, was it, did you find it, just overall, did you find it difficult? Did you find it easy? If you found it difficult, I, I'd be curious just what was, you know, why was it difficult? Realize, half realizing that I threw six random positions at you and said, you know, try these. Um, did anyone, did anyone find it particularly difficult? Nothing in the chat, Janine? No? Good. And I would say if they did, they did a fantastic job anyway, because they all look really, really great. 
and, and there's, you know, there's different style. I, I heard different styles. I heard lots of different, <clears throat> different words. And, you know, a lot of those step back to the, that list of words that I had before, you know, innovate. I, and rich wasn't on that slide, but that is a word that you see in a lot of different missions. So, you know, these are, these are six different jobs that I asked you to try. And, and, and we went through three, you know, three kind of more, more entry level and more common jobs that we see. So the, the goal the goal here, what I'm hoping that you took from this is that using the guidelines of what goes into a mission and, you know, maybe tying this reassect stuff in into it, they, you know, for any job seeker or even or even for yourself, if you're looking for a, for a promotion or a new position to help define that so you can look at exactly what you're going for or what a job seeker is going for. Um, I do want to, you know, we do have time. So before I move on, I do want, I'm going to stop sharing for a second here. And I'm actually going to share my Safari page here. Once I find my, bear with me for one second. I'm trying to, I'm going to navigate. Well, see now my internet is kind of being a little funky right now. It's windy, but not raining here. I'm trying to go to the website for the um, psychometric, uh, for the, the Reasec. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna share this. So when you go to that website, just to kind of give people a quick walk through here, can everyone see my screen, my Safari? Yes. Awesome. So when you go to the link that's in the, the keynote, this is, what, uh, this is what opens up, the Holland Code Reassect test. It gives you a little bit of a background. Um, and it, it, the test consists of 48 tasks that you will have to rate by how much you would enjoy performing each on a scale of one to five. It takes about five to 10 minutes. So it does say that it's for educational and entertainment use only, but you know, it's just the disclaimer that it's not psychological advice of any kind, but believe me, we found the tool to be very, very helpful. So if I begin the assessment, this is what this is all it is. Play a musical instrument. I enjoy music, so I would say I would enjoy doing that for a job. Perform stunts for a movie or television show. No, thank you. Design sets for plays. Not handy. Supervise, you know, so you, you can literally, it's very, it's very fast. Do research on plants or animals. Uh, help people who have drugs or alcohol. And I'm not going to, you know, go through all these, but it's literally that fast. And when you're done, you get the results that I uh, showed you, um, uh, that I showed you prior with the, with the bar graph. And if I go to ONET, which is onetonline.org, and I, I just do a quick search. So let me do a search for a um, restaurant host. Uh, so you can see even just searching for one job, very, very many come up. There's food preparation workers. So if I click on hosts and hostesses, if you, for those of you who haven't been to ONET before, this is the what I'm talking about as far as the breakdown. So five of 21 tasks displayed. So if I want to view all the tasks, this is like your bulleted list of the various tasks that are reported for this job. What technology skills are needed, various types of knowledge, skills, abilities, the various work activities, it just keeps going. And if you scroll down under interests, interest code, that's where I got the Reasec breakdown. So if you scroll down on any job, the interest code, so some have two, some have three. Um, this is just for one job. And I mean, I, don't, I, I only broke out one thing. Here's all the work styles and all of the work context. So this, this provides ways you can look up job by job. ONET itself, the website, uh, has you know advanced searches. It has assessments. Uh, many people already know about it, so I don't want to give a, a, a huge tour, but it's ownetonline.org, and that's where you can connect that reassect. So, uh, and if you do the full Holland Code test, when you get your results, there's literally a link saying, take me to that type of work, and that's where I got that big list of the 36 jobs for an SIA uh, reassect type. So just to go a little more in depth on that. Um, are there any questions on, on that piece? Okay, so I'm just gonna go back to my keynotes for just one final slide. Hey Ryan, I'm just, I'm just curious if yeah. 
partner uh, use the reaction or whatever, um, if they just want to like raise their hand or give a little wave if they've heard of ONET before, um, I just yeah. have to have it. I can't see everyone again. Who? What do I got for reactions? I use it. We use it. Outside of that, I'm not seeing anyone else with a reaction or a comment. Christy, were you using it for the for the um, assessments or to search for jobs or both? Um, the job search. The job search, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know about the RIASEC, so that'll that'll really help. Yeah, so now, now you know what that interest code means. So, yep, we've had a few uh, have used it personally, and then some who haven't heard it before. So thanks for sharing that resource. Awesome. Yeah, when I, when I ran my own, uh, I'm, I'm going back to school to finish up the last of my bachelor's and then go right into a master's. And uh, I need to find, I need to figure out by June what my master's path is because I'm going to have a bachelor's for then. And uh, I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to look at this. And I saw all these, you know, higher level things on, under SIA. I'm like, okay, this is where I'm going to do some of my research. So ONET is not just for the people we serve. It's for everybody. It's for us. I will be using it very heavily. Janine, I promise I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I was just going to say that. So vocational psychology is where it's at right now. So that was what I'd like to do for the masters. Uh, with that said, you know, we've covered a lot today. We, we you know, went really in depth with the REASEC. We talked about the missions for companies and how it didn't relate and we can make it relate to positions. What, what questions do you have or, or what insight do you have? I'm, I'm curious what you thought of today. Um, you know, positive, negative, what you were hoping to see, what you took away. Who, anyone wants to share anything, go for it. Jody said she found this very useful. Thank you. Great. As people are thinking, as you're all sitting there kind of collecting your thoughts about how what you've heard about today is um, one thing that I will share with Ellen and she can send out after um, that I, I just didn't think to include it in this particular session but um, we've started provide, doing video we call them video resumes but it's really it's just a small video of some a job seeker and they do exactly what Ryan is kind of um, has provided you. So I, I'll send you a video of Carl who talks about his love for um, old time music and his, you know, interest in working with seniors and why he connects with them. And it's been really useful for us for when we're meeting employers and we're not we don't have the person with us necessarily. You know, most of the times when we're job developing, hopefully that job seeker is with us, but sometimes they're not. And so um, we'll have, our staff have iPads and they have access to videos and they can show the employer. So um, in Carl's case, the video that I'll send to Ellen, he, you know, again, talks about how he loves people and he loves to interact and he loves old, you know, old time music and he connects well with older people. And we used that as a way to get him an interview at a Chili's restaurant and so he was the the host at the restaurant and and when they saw him you know his resume didn't have much to say he hadn't worked before he doesn't necessarily interview terribly well um, because he tends to get a little off topic and this video just presents him so perfectly um, for that position that as soon as they saw that they wanted to interview him and then we helped them work with him to really kind of keep on target so he wouldn't kind of you know go off on on tangent seating the, the guests. But I will send that so you get a, a quick glance at what something like that looks like and if that's a, a useful tool for you to use for some of your job seekers. Yeah, I, Carl is uh, Carl is who I call uh, somebody with a natural sense of humor. Like it doesn't matter who he's talking to and I mean that in a, in a mature way. Just things that he says get people chuckling and get people talking. He's just, yeah, I, 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 I watch that video regularly because I, I just love Carl. I haven't seen him in forever in person either. Other other questions, other insights? I do have my contact information up here and um, uh, we'll make sure that, and especially uh, Ellen, I, I don't know if we, did we send out the slide from the first one? Uh, we sent out the recording. Um, 
I apologize if you hear my dog snoring in the background. She's very loud. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so we do have the link to the recording um, that's been made public as of today, so we can do the same. Um, and we have all the email addresses for the folks who registered today, so we can um, absolutely send out the slides. Uh, I did have one question, Ryan, and I apologize. This is not my job, so I don't know if other that's people okay. just like, duh, Ellen. Um, but so, you know, we talked a lot about writing a job description, you know, today. So you're doing things like video resumes. I'm presuming that you're using sort of the results of, you know, maybe that assessment, if you've done it with the people that you serve to, um, to highlight where their skill areas are, their strengths. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you're going out and looking at job descriptions from other companies, you're just really trying to use that assessment to match the person's qualities with um, you know, maybe what the job description itself says or what similar job descriptions on ONET um, would highlight for that type of job, right? That's right. And what we, what we, what we use the REASEC for is to help job seekers, you know, talk about themselves. Uh, you know, the REASEC is something that's known in the psychology world and a little bit in the supported employment world. So if somebody were to sit down in an interview, if I were to sit down in an interview and be like, oh, I'm an SIA on the REASEC scale, the, the interview would be like, wait, what? And then we have to explain mm -hmm. what that is and everything. So, you know, we, we put it into plain language to help people say, you know, I'm for somebody who identifies in that realistic realm, I work very well with my hands. Here's, you'll see this in the video resume. You'll see an example of how well I can work you know, how well I can assemble something or whatever it might be. So we, we put it into kind of layman's terms and in plain language and, and examples if possible. It can be used for individuals who don't, um, who aren't able to read as well. I mean, certainly you can sit side by side and ask questions, but um, you can also adapt it with pictures. And so if you're worried about if there's any kind of, um, you know, if you're worried that maybe your participation in it with the person is kind of guiding any of the answers, you could just transform it into pictures and then look at, you know, kind of where they fall. Right. But you, you're, you know, to your point, Ellen, it is, it, it is a, it can be a very secular thing where, you know, you're, we're, we're looking at a cycle of if you have a job description, you can attach that to a person's skills and transform that into a more inspirational mission. If you have if you have a person with a personal mission, you can then search for jobs that match the the Reasec and then go for, and then go from there. So, you know we've you know I've I've talked with people who have done the the mission part of it prior to applying for a job to make it sound more positive and, and make make it actually you know let's help you realize what the impact is. We've we've done it for people who think that it's not. A very impactful job and maybe are already in the job and don't feel like they're getting much out of it and you know that's not to say a mission is going to see now you should feel better you know maybe there it is time for a change but it helps people identify you know what what their what the intention is for them to contribute to the job and to that to that role and how well it matches with their intentions in life what they want to contribute to the world as a whole not to get too philosophical but that's you know that is what it what it entails any any final questions or insight? And again, feel free, email, phone, connect with me on LinkedIn. I haven't tweeted in a while, but I promise I will. It's it's more work related stuff that for that account. <clears throat> All right. Well, thank you very much for having us. And um, if there's any questions after the fact, like I said, reach on out. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you all for attending. Have a great rest of your day and we'll make sure we get the slides and the recording out to you, Ellen, um, by tomorrow. Thanks everyone. Take care.